Hey guys, Chris with Killer Arcade Games here. I'm gonna try to keep this intro short, so let's get right into it. What I'm gonna be doing on this video today is kind of giving you an, a look over the entire Hydro Thunder arcade cabinet. I've always been interested in what was inside of the arcade games that I used to see as a kid, and I'm still pretty interested in it now, to be honest. So I'm gonna give you guys a look at what's going on inside of this thing. I'm gonna show you guys the boot up sequence and show you a few other things. Uh, let's just dive right into it. So looking at the front of the cabinet, we have a typical light up marquee. The cabinet is not on, so it's not lit currently. Two speakers up here, and those are actually very loud speakers. They're not very big, but they're very loud. And you've got a 25 or a 27 inch monitor. I think it's a 27, I could be wrong. Uh, luckily, my cabinet still has the bezel around it that kind of gives you some instructions. Some liquid must have gotten in there at some point. It's a little warped in the corners, but it's still there. I'm happy about that. I had to use a little fish eye lens here to make sure you can actually see this, but this is the throttle. My wife repainted this for me because it was totally gone pretty much. Uh, that's your boost button there. Uh, all the art is still intact, thankfully. It's a little rough in some spots, but it's all still there. This is the stock steering wheel that came with it. It does have force feedback, which is awesome. It's one of the best things about the real arcades is that wheel jerking around while you're playing. Uh, high, low, and pilot view buttons, which are pretty standard. So my cabinet did not come with any functioning coin doors because this was actually at a Mr. Gaddy's. Now, the funny thing about this coming from a Mr. Gaddy's is I used to work there when I was a kid in high school. I actually, this is where I fell in love with um, Hydro Thunder. I never knew about this arcade until I got a job there and this game was just one of my favorites there. This and Rush actually. Uh, these panels were put on later. This used to be for one of those stupid card slot things and the two buttons there. I don't really care that it doesn't have coin doors. And here is your typical service volume up and down and uh, test buttons. This gets you into the test menu, uh, gives you service credits and all that. Got your monitor adjustment panel back there. It's way in there, but at least you can adjust it from the front of the cabinet. And I actually cannot open this. I've never drilled out the lock and I can see in there. That's, I don't know if I can focus on it. I can actually see that there is money inside of there <laughs> and a ticket from Mr. Gaddy's. I don't know if it's worth to drill out the uh, lock just to get that maybe 75 cents that could be inside of there or whatever may be in there. I'll do it one of these days. And once you get underneath the deck there where the wheel is, there is actually a spot. This is for pedals. So this cabinet could be converted into a racing cab that has pedals. That is not any speaker or anything. It's just a vent, I guess, to let air flow into the area where the PC is. And looking at the seat, people always think these are actually speakers. There are no speakers in here. This is an open hole that leads into the cavity of the seat. And on the back of the seat, there is a subwoofer that radiates the bass, I guess, through here. If you hear hard hits of bass, it'll actually blow the air through and hit the back of your head, which is cool. Uh, it's not like Rush, where, you know, Rush the Rock actually has speakers facing outside the back of the cabinet. This one just has open holes, I guess, base radiators. So really this is just a two speakers here and a one subwoofer kind of setup. And let's look at the back of the seat here. Mine actually has all the placards still on it. I took these off and cleaned them the best I could. A few scratches on them, but it's okay. You're not really here to see that part anyway. And down here is where the subwoofer is hidden. It is behind this grate. I took it off one time just to clean it and I was able to see it. Pretty interesting, good size subwoofer. I can't remember how big it actually is, but I want to say it's, you know, I don't know, a six to eight inch subwoofer. And it really pumps out some sound. I mean, it shakes the heck out of the cabinet. That's all for the outside of the cabinet. Let's go take a look inside now. All right, here's the back of the cabinet. First off, let me apologize right now. There's gonna be some dust in here. I've cleaned up some of it, but this game saw years and years of service and tons and tons of use and not a lot of cleaning. I need to do more, but let's, let's just go right into it. Don't judge too harshly. So I'll just zoom out now and show you the entire thing as a whole, and then we'll go through it piece by piece. There you go. Tons and tons of stuff is in this cabinet. But first off, we've got the usual monitor up here. I believe it's a 25 inch. I thought it was 27 until I just saw this sticker, or whatever this thing is right here. So maybe it's a 25 inch monitor. Uh, we've got a new flyback on here. The problem with the new flyback is it sucks. I believe it sucks at least. The last one exploded on me and didn't last maybe 10 hours and this one is already kind of doing the same stuff. So I, I don't expect it to last me terribly long. And moving down from there, you've got the sound amplifier. This uh, is very self-explanatory. It actually uses these RCA cables, which come down around here and plug in using like a headphone style cord into the back of the PC. And looking through the back, this is the dashboard back here. You got your steering motor, the cogs and all that. So right back here, this is the throttle or the back side of the throttle. I have a whole video where I tore that apart and it used parts of another throttle assembly to build that one. If you wanna see that, I'll leave a link in the description. 
I'm not gonna take the front panel off just because it's too difficult. And all you're gonna see is basically a metal plate. But you've got your three buttons over there for the view and that's about it for there. And now we look at this deck right here. This is right underneath the monitor behind the dash. This is the steering motor board. This is the board that actually started smoking when this, uh, oh, there it goes, when this fuse was replaced. So it made me realize something is definitely wrong. I didn't just blow a fuse for nothing. And it has something to do with the throttle cable. It's not necessarily that part. It got smashed at some point and is a real mess. So I'm gonna probably fix that one of these days so the lights will work again, but otherwise everything works. So I just left it alone. So this board basically powers and controls the motor over there, as far as I know. I'm not an expert at this, but uh, you can still find these on eBay, thankfully. But all mine work, so I'm going to leave it alone. And next to it is the Diego board. This one's a little dirtier than I like to admit. I don't know what is on it. Um, I genuinely don't know what that is. It, it almost looks like someone spilled a soda or something in here, so I've really got to clean that one of these days. Now, why is it called the Diego board? That's a great question. Well, I think the game was created in San Diego, California, and this board, from what I can tell, takes the video signal out of the back of the PC graphics card. It routes around over to here, and then it converts it into the arcade monitor signal, which goes out there. I also believe it handles the controls and converts it into something the PC can read because that wire comes around here to the serial port and plugs in right there. So I'm pretty sure that's the main thing it does. If you don't have this board working, I'm pretty sure you're screwed and this board's getting hard to find. They don't make them anymore, obviously, but even on eBay, I'm having trouble finding working ones. I thought about buying a few of them just as backups. And before we move down to the computer, check out this old school Midway sticker. I love seeing these in the cabinets. Uh, shows the date the cabinet was made power information. Yeah, it is a 25 inch. I always assumed it was a 27, but it's 25 inch. Boy, do I miss seeing these stickers on arcade games. Midway was amazing. Now we can move down to the computer. And once again, I'm sorry, it is a little dusty inside here. The outer case of the computer is completely missing. That's how it was when I bought it. This used to be a spot for a three and a half inch floppy drive. Can you believe they actually put one of those in here? As far as I can tell, all the floppy drive was really used for was to maybe update the game software and to uh, apparently save the high scores, I guess, if you're swapping the computer. I don't know, some kind of backup and the audits and all that, but either way, I don't need it. All right, I gotta use a little fisheye lens here. Let's zoom out and see. This is literally just a PC. It is running an Intel processor, a Celeron, which is funny. I used to have an old PC with one of those in it. Regular PC power supply. This is an interesting heat sink. It's like sideways and the fan blows the air on it, and I guess the processor is literally sitting in there sideways. And here's the graphics card for the game. It's literally just a PC graphics card. I cannot remember if it's Voodoo or 3DFX. I can't remember which card it is. If you don't have this card, you can't play this game. In fact, if you don't have this entire exact motherboard and PC processor combo set, this game is unplayable, unfortunately. It's not emulated. It just doesn't exist. I wish they hadn't locked it to this hardware because we're kind of screwed if these ever fully fail out or whenever they all fail and they're gone, Hydro Thunder is gone unless some hackers can fix that because I sure can't. And also from what I can tell, this is like a card that has a bunch of power inputs. It comes out of the top and I believe it powers those boards or one of the boards or two of the boards over here. I can't remember which ones. And here we have a networking port, which used to link the cabinets together. And then what's funny is I still have the original cable that actually came with the cabinet from what I can tell. It is not used, but it may still work. I figured I'd just leave it in there just in case. And hiding over here among the dust, just so you guys know, if you wanna see the other videos when I clean this up, this was caked like two inches high probably with dust all under there. These fans are just like permanently caked in it. They still work, so I left them alone, but got as much dust out as I possibly could. Um, this is the old hard drive. From what I can tell, it's the original drive that's been in there since the game was made and it still works. A quantum something, quantum fireball hard drive, it looks like. Let me zoom in on that. Yeah, quantum fireball. Interesting, yeah, it still works. Um, here's the old IDE cable for the three and a half inch floppy drive. So if this hard drive fails, you can easily get a flash kit, swap it out. I'm just not gonna mess with it until it needs to be done. And underneath the PC power supply, we have this box, which to be perfectly honest with you, I think it's just like a power junction box of some sort. We have an isolation transformer down there. So 
So that's all for the back of this one. It, it looks pretty messy wiring wise, but I think it's all pretty clean technically. Everything's kind of grouped together. This was actually, I think, one of the first arcade games to use a PC inside. So I think they were learning as they went. I wish I still had the outer case on it. Well, now I'm gonna show you guys how this thing boots up. I'm actually gonna do it in a different way than I normally do since there's so much going on in the back of the cabinet. When this cabinet boots up, it makes a lot of different beeps and all this stuff. So what I thought I would do to make it easier on you guys who may be troubleshooting a problem is I took an extra microphone, I set it in the back of the cabinet, and I'm gonna record the sounds it makes inside the cabinet and out. The other microphone will be sitting up here on the seat or something so you can hear everything it does. Now, if you're watching this and wondering why does it take so long to boot up, it's just how this cabinet is. It's a whole PC in there. It's not like a single board arcade cabinet that boots up almost instantly like my Killer Instinct, for example. It actually stays on a black screen for almost, I think, 45 seconds to a minute long, so don't let that worry you if you just bought one of these and you don't know what it's doing. I'll stop talking about it now and just show you. This thing's a pretty interesting boot up sequence. It's by far the longest boot up sequence for any of the cabinets I own so far. Let's check it out. All right, guys, well, that's it. You guys got to see the inside of this cabinet, the outside of the cabinet, the boot up sequence. I hope you guys found it entertaining or at least informative. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more arcade content and leave me a comment letting me know what you think of the Hydro Thunder arcade cabinet. I mentioned the flyback earlier in the video, but unfortunately it's just acting up like crazy on really bright screens. It stretches the image uh, vertically and it just looks really bad. I'll show you a clip of it before I wrap up this video. So this is what I was talking about. When the screen goes to that white screen after picking your boat to the loading screen, it stretches and jellos really weird. Let's look at it. And there you go. It's very frustrating because the last flyback literally blew up while I was in here. Luckily I was in here playing Killer Instinct and I was thinking, I smell smoke. You never want to say that when you're at home, of course, but it's like, what is that smell? The garage door was open a little bit. I thought maybe somebody was barbecuing. No. Turns out my Hydro Thunder was barbecuing itself. That flyback had just bursted and oozed pus out and the monitor was off and I shut it down as quick as possible and looked inside. Thankfully, everything else works fine, but the monitor was dead. I'm gonna do all I can to not swap out the CRT with an LCD because this one still looks really good. If you see the monitor, it looks pretty great, actually. That's where I am right now with the Hydro Thunder. I'll keep you guys updated. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.